the same. Wherever his name is mentioned, situations change. Wherever his name is mentioned, things don't stay the same. Whatever battle that you face this year, at the mention of his name, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that he alone is Lord.
this play. As long as we call upon his name, amen, that was an African church congregation calling on the name of the Lord. And we're so thankful on today for his amazing grace, how the Lord took us out of darkness. All you had to do was press enter. Do it again. Amen. So we honor the Lord this morning for his goodness and his mercy. Blessed is the name of the Lord and all his many blessings. He's been so good to us and we we just thank him on today for his amazing grace. We thank God for his loving kindness and for his tender mercy. Thank God for all of you being here with us this morning at Center Refuge Christian Center, Church of God in Christ here in the city of Enfield, North Carolina. Amen. Thank God for all of you that are watching by our, our Facebook and um, the rebroadcast that will take place immediately after the live feed. We'll rebroadcast on um, Facebook. We want to go right into the word of the Lord. God gave me a revelation there. And uh, little lo and behold, I never thought that we would have been where we were last week. And uh, we never know just when God is preparing a message. We know that he always is. But we just never know when God's message will come to us and what that message will be. We only know that what God has to say is very important, it's very necessary, and it's very now. I was going to preach this sermon on last week, but the Lord said different, and it is so apropos, amen, that we are able to do this on this Sunday simply because we didn't even think. Sometimes we have no idea when God is preparing a, a message that we need. But um, after the challenges that we experienced and then for God to have given me this message, we look at it today in a completely different light than we would have looked at it had we done it last week because we wouldn't have had the actual testimony that we have this week having endured or having the Lord endure us as he did on last week and, and we were able to now rejoice and the victory that God gives, that only God can give because he's God and he's been so good and kind to us. And so the message becomes very epical for today. Let's go to our Bibles, to the book of Psalms 27. This is Psalms 27. It's not very long, but it's very important. And we want to read it. Psalms 27. The Bible declares, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should arise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, verse 5 says, he, being the Lord, shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing. Yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice have mercy also upon me and answer me when thou sayest seek my face my heart said unto thee thy face lord will i seek hide not thy face far from me put not thy servant away in anger thou hast been my help leave me not Neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. But when my mother, my father, and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. For false witnesses are arisen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And we take, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. We take this entire psalm to form the title of the message on this morning. It would have been different had we took one or two verses to form the title of the message. But the entire psalm speaks to the strength of God's word and it speaks to the message that God has for us on today. I want to preach this morning from the topic of shifting from fear to faith. Shifting. We're going to shift. We're going to maneuver going to move shifting from fear to faith. Father, may I do no harm to your word. Lord, save and deliver. Let your strength be revealed through your word. Tear down the wall of petition between thee and the hero. Move on his heart, Holy Spirit, that Allow him to receive your word, the engrafted word, into the soul this morning. That the sinner might be saved. That those that are bound might be delivered. And those that are walking with your Lord will be encouraged that you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Shifting. From fear to faith. 
the 18th century Irish philosopher Edmund Burke stated the only thing necessary for triumph of evil the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. He said the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. History itself is the best judge that the word of God is true. In Psalms 27, David begins this psalm with his own questions about fear. And he concludes it with another option for responding to fear that involves neither fighting nor fleeing. David has given the matter of fear far more thought than most of us. He spent eight years running from Saul. He spent two years running from his son Absalom. And he spent 40 years fighting fierce battles against formidable enemies. But, but here David has the perfect reasoning. David has determined that God is his light, his salvation, and his strength. David has determined that he will not stumble in darkness, as many do. David has a deliverer. And he has security, even during the times that alarmed him the most. David knew about fear. David knew the true meaning of fear. He knew the impact that fear has on people. Real fear, not a imagined fear, but real fear. Now, fear is a universal emotion that frequently triggers a fight or flight response in people. Are you with me? When afraid, some people will muster all the courage they have and they will stand their ground, whether or not it's a wise choice to do. Some people just got that fight in them and they are not going to allow anybody or anything to bully them. Then there are other people that at the first sign of trouble, they flee using the thought process that I will just live to fight another day. Sometimes the fight is not for another day. Sometimes the fight has to be now. And when your first instinct is always to flee, then you're just digging yourself a much deeper hole because whatever fear you're harboring, it becomes compiled with other fears. Because your thinking process is one of self-preservation as opposed to a thinking of victory, now, of, of beating this enemy back. You become an expert at taking blows, not at fighting back. God has not given us that spirit of fear. Fear, however, is a very necessary tool. It has a it has a purpose. Fear is needed to, to alert you to potential or even certain danger. But if it is not addressed, if that fear is not addressed and combated, 
it becomes a stifling entrapment that paralyzes the person and it will paralyze all of your defensive mechanisms that God has placed in us. The mind stops looking to overcome the ensuing difficulty and it makes you just sit there in abstract fear and bondage as you await the expected calamity. You just brace yourself for it all the time. But never occurred to you there might be another way out. Because fear makes you just sit there. If you don't have proper fear, if you don't have a proper mechanism that uses that fear to turn you to another response, you just sit there waiting for the calamity to come. We're talking about shifting now from fear to faith, and how that affects the church. How does it affect the believer? There is an old paradigm that has crept back into society, and it has overtaken even America today, and it started years ago. There's a that old paradigm where we put self and pagan worship above the worship of the almighty. Jesus declared, I am the almighty. Revelation 1 and 8 says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come Jesus says he's the almighty. Are you with me? Now there was a time up until about maybe 20, 25 years ago that being a Christian and Christian values put the church as the majority. Anybody remember those days when the church was first? The church was at the head of the table. Even during the height of race, racial tensions in America, being a Christian brought warring parties together. It was having that joint affection and relationship with the Lord that allowed our oppressors to embrace right over wrong. It was Christian values that made those that were willing to have the courage to stand up for what was right to say I'm going to do what's right no matter what it costs and it costs the 19th century Black and white America, 18th century, black and white America. Some of the believers and the heroes and heroines of that era, they paid a heavy price. They paid with their lives. They paid with punishment. They paid with imprisonment. They paid with being uh, uh, ostracized in their communities. Why? Because they dared to look in the face of fear and they trusted God and they did what was right. And so that period of time was the turning point in relationships in America. And so even those back in those days that had no real alliance with God, they would wear elaborate or simple crosses around their neck to signify that even though they may not be sold out to God, they may not be committed Christians, but they wore those chains 
to demonstrate that they were of the belief that God still reigned and reigns supreme. However, today, the Christian and the church are now the underdog. Somebody need to hear me today. The church and the Christian, we're the underdogs today. Now, that's not to say that the underdog is weaker or that the underdog will lose because in the case of the church, Jesus already declared that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. However, on the surface of public acceptance, on the surface of political correctness in our society, the church has lost its place at the head of the table. The church in 2020 was even deemed non-essential. Today's Christians, they, they cower in the public arena when confronted by the enemies of God. They cower when confronted by the enemies of holiness. They cower when confronted by the enemies of of truth and agape love. They cower when confronted by the enemies of law and order. The church in times past had always had a prominent voice in public policy and in public life. But the day the church has given ground to the gates of hell. The church has given ground to the pro-abortion crowd. The church has given ground to infanticide. This is where abortions are being conducted after the baby actually comes out of the womb. It's called infanticide. It's happening all over. It's legal, actually. The church has given ground when it comes to idolatry, deviant sexuality, the LBGTQ, child pornography, and especially when it comes to family values. The church has given ground. We now openly accept homosexuals raising children while at the same time stripping that child of their God-given identity and destroying, twisting their minds and their bodies as they tell little Johnny, in fact, you are little Jane. And the church stands by. And we watch as the world and the culture just destroys our children. And the culture, mind you, should be God's culture. We are living God's culture. God's culture was the original culture. So we give ground to God's culture to the culture of those that are around us. The church has given ground to the rise of the voices that call evil good and good evil. And the church has done this because they fear man more than they fear God. Most Christians don't even talk about God anymore in the office place, in the workplace, or in the park as they sit and watch the children play. They don't even talk about the Lord in these places anymore. Church, there has to be a shift. Job said in Job 3 and 25, 
He said, for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. In the Good News translation, those same two verses read, what I fear the most overtakes me. What I dread happens to me. I have no peace. I have no quiet. I have no rest. And trouble just keeps on coming. Shifting from fear to faith. Jesus said it in this wise, John 10 and 10. He said, the thief cometh, but to kill, steal, and to destroy. The thief cometh, he cometh to kill your joy. He cometh to steal your confidence. And he comes to destroy your faith. Jesus said, I am come. That you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Shifting from fear to faith to what God has to say about the issues of the day and how we should respond. God told Moses in Deuteronomy 32 and 39, he said, Moses, see that now I, even I, and he. And there is no God with me. We're talking about who we ought to be fearing. God told Moses, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. This is the God that we serve. This is the God we ought to be responding to in this world. God gave the church power over the enemy. God gave the church power over the forces of darkness. But the church has to respond. And the church nowadays has decided that because the relationship is not there. You see, if the relationship is there, if the joy of the Lord is your strength, then you're not going to allow anything to hinder that relationship. And if you don't allow anything to hinder your relationship with God, you will continue to march on. You will continue to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. You will continue the race that is set before us. David said these things and Psalms 37 and 3, he said, trust in the Lord and do good. So thou shalt dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. God is telling us where the shift ought to be. God is telling us where our minds need to be trained. This is not the old church where you sit behind the brick walls and and you heard a good a good sermon on Sunday morning, and you you heard a masterful choir, and then you got up, left church, and went on about your business, leaving the heavy work to somebody else. We've got great Christian organizations out here today that are fighting on every turn. They're fighting for the unborn. They're they're fighting against those that are coming to take the rights and the privilege of serving God publicly. They are single-handedly defending our children when we're not defending our own children. There are organizations that are standing up for the Lord. David said, delight thyself also in the Lord and he will give thee the desires of of thine heart. And for most and for a lot of people, their only desire is to not have to be bothered. 
Lord, if they just leave me alone and let me sit in my little cubby hole somewhere and just don't bother me and I'm not going to bother them. But David says, but the Lord says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. This point in the Christian march, we've got to endeavor to do something. We can no longer afford in our communities, in our homes, in our children to sit back and just let the devices of the enemy just come and to take over our lives and our families and our existence. Help me, Jesus. David said to rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him that prospereth in his way, because of the man that bringeth wicked devices to pass. The Lord told us that the enemy of salt was going to be there. And in the last days, and we're in those days. Make no mistake about it. We're in those days where of the great falling away. We've just witnessed that in the last two years. A great falling away from the Lord. A great falling away from the church. But just like the Marine Corps, God just needs a few good men. A few good women. God will get the job done. He said not to fear them that prosper in their own wickedness because they use wicked devices. He said for the evildoer shall be cut off. Them that wait on the Lord, he said, they shall inherit the earth. God said for a little while and the wicked shall not be. They're there today. They might appear to be prospering. They might appear to be winning. But we got to trust in what the God of the Bible is saying. He said the evildoers will be cut off. from Those that wait on the Lord will inherit the earth. He said, but yet a little while and the wicked shall not be. Thou shalt diligently consider his place and it shall not be. You will see him today and they'll be gone tomorrow. They appear to have victory today. But God says their day is coming. The wicked plotted against the just and gnashes upon him with his teeth. Let me tell you what the Lord says, first lady. Psalms 37 and 13. He said, the Lord shall laugh at him. For God seeth his day is coming. Shifting, tell somebody, from faith. To fear. I heard David say in Psalms 34, he said, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. He said, The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, help me, Jesus. David said, I sought the Lord. How many of you can say that today? I sought the Lord. And he heard. And he delivered me from all of my fears. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. And he delivereth them. Help me somebody to say, oh, taste and seek that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Fear the Lord, church. 
This is God's command on today. He said, fear the Lord, O ye his saints. But there is no watch in him that fear the Lord. We need to be shifting, y'all, from fear of the world to faith in the Lord. We need to fear the Lord God because God is he. And is no God with him. And the Lord says that he is the one that kills and makes alive. He said, I wound and I heal. And there is no God with me. So it doesn't matter what you see in the world. You can't trust what you see with your natural eye. For the Bible says the natural man can't discern spiritual things because he's not a spiritual person. But we ought to recognize that we ought to fear the Lord. All ye saints, for there is no want to them that fear the Lord. The young lions do lack, David said, and suffer hunger. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Are you with me today? We can't give in to the pressure of what we are seeing in society. But the Lord says, depart from evil and do good. He said, seek peace and pursue it. Sometimes as you're seeking peace, uh, you're going to have to fight sometimes uh, to have some peace uh, in your life. Uh, peace doesn't just come uh, because you are running and hiding. Uh, because think the things that are plaguing you, uh, the things that you're running from, uh, no matter how far you run, oh, Job said that trouble, uh, it just kept on coming. Uh, because rather than trust God and fight in the battle of the Lord, you just run and hide and hide your face. You won't even give your service to those that's got a plan for uplifting holiness. You won't even give your time to those ministries and those people that are standing up and holding up the bloodstained banner. You just go on about your merry way. We don't even want nobody to know that we are servants of the Lord. Because at face value, you seem to think that the evildoers are in charge and running things. You watch all that news every day. And if you watch the news every day, you walk away with the impression uh, that the church is losing this war. Uh, you walk away believing uh, that it's all over. Uh, it appears that the enemies of God uh, have taken center stage uh, and are making ground. Uh, but I need you to know on today uh, uh, that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous uh, and his ears are uh, are open to their cry. God hears your prayers. God sees your frustration. God sees your things that are going wrong and wrong and wrong. But you got to shift your fear. You got to shift from faith to from fear to faith in the Lord. You got to recognize that there is no defeat in the Lord. They used to say back in the day, uh, the old Brill Cream hair commercial, uh, they used to say, you can't lose uh, with the stuff we use. Uh, we need to know on today uh, that when we're serving God's army, uh, when the Lord is with us, uh, when the Lord is in us, uh, we can't lose uh, with the stuff we use uh, because greater is he that's in the world that's in us than he that's in the world and greater is he that is actually in us 
than he that's in them. The Lord will keep us. I've heard the Lord say in Psalms 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. David said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. In him will I trust. I've shifted, y'all. I'm shifting from fear of the world to faith in Jesus. Jesus will not let us down. Jesus will not lead us in a wrong direction. You got the Holy Ghost, and the Lord gave you the Holy Ghost that you might be a witness and fight back. We've got to know the, the power that the Lord has given us to fight this Christian battle. He said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And he said, with that power, you shall be witnesses unto him in Judea and in Samaria and in the other most parts of the earth. Oh, the Lord said he was starting in Jerusalem and then in Judea and in Samaria. So what the Lord means, even to the uttermost part of the world, that God rules everywhere. God doesn't lose in America. God is a winner everywhere. God doesn't lose in Ukraine. God is a winner everywhere. God doesn't lose when it comes down to the pandemic. Oh, we realized that even on last week, just because the COVID is out there, that don't mean that we run and cower from the Lord. Because I can assure you that one day the pandemic might knock on your door. It might come and visit you in your home with all the protections that you made to keep yourself from becoming exposed to this pandemic. One day is going to come and just may knock on your door and visit you. But I heard the Lord say, Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by day. This is Psalms 91. Neither for the arrow that flies by night, nor that pestilence, that pandemic, that COVID, that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes in the noonday. It might knock on your door. It might come and visit you. It may want to be there for a minute or two. But I heard the Lord say, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. He said, But no trouble. It shall not come nigh thee. He said, It might come knock on your door. It might even stay a day or two. But the Lord says, You shall only with thine eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked. We're going to watch them fall. We're going to watch them roll over. All that wickedness that's going on in the world on today that causes even the church to run and hide. God said to you need to gird up yourself. Uh, tighten up your belt. Uh, remember who you are. Uh, remember who you are. Uh, and who you got fighting on the inside. Uh, and when we know uh, that we're on the Lord's side. Uh, the Lord says uh, only with our eyes uh, shall we behold and see uh, the reward of the wicked. Uh, why? Because I have made the Lord... Uh, which is my refuge, even now, the most high is my habitation. The Lord is your habitation. He said, there is no evil that will befall you. 
that will utterly destroy you. Neither shall any plague come nigh you. And even if it does, I want you to know, just like the children of Israel did back in Egypt, when the deaf angel came and they had painted, they had put the blood of Jesus over the doorposts and the lentils. We've got the blood. We're covered in the blood. You're covered in the blood. The Lord is protecting you. We're fighting the Lord's battle. And the blood of Jesus has been put on the doorposts and the lentils of our heart. God will keep us. God will keep us. God will not desert us. God doesn't have to desert us because there is no force in this world that can defeat the Almighty God. You just got to live right. You got to do right. You can't have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. Then you're wondering why your stuff ain't working. Like the Burl Cream commercial. You can't lose with the stuff you use if you are committed in the Lord and you're walking in his ways and you keep keeping vigil and communion with him. So we find here, I'm getting ready to close y'all in our text. Psalms 27, when faced with fear, and sometimes you're going to be faced with fear because the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver us out of them all. There is victory in Jesus. We don't always know what the outcome is, but we've got to always know that we have the victory when we're in Jesus. When faced with fear, David keeps his priorities straight. He focuses on a lifetime relationship that he has with God at the tabernacle. David's eyes, they're not directed on the approaching enemy like a lot of us do. Yeah, you got to know what's coming on you. You got to know what's coming your way. But a lot of times, the enemy uses a, a terror tactic. He will demonstrate power that he doesn't really have to take the fight out of you. You ever been in a fight and you took that big punch, that punch that just took all the fight out of you. You decided, man, this fight is not worth it. But you see, that's what the enemy does. That's what the world is doing to the church on today. The LBGTQ, this lawlessness we have in the country, this untruthful, this, this culture we have in politics, this dog-eat-dog, -dog, neighbor against neighbor, mother against father, sister against brother, all these things are designed to take the fight out of you. Instead of doing that which is pleasing to the Lord, instead of being out there in ministry, uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, letting people know that Jesus saves, uh, we get caught up in philosophy, we get caught up in Fox News, uh, we get caught up in CNN. Uh, but David, uh, when he saw trouble coming, uh, his eyes weren't directed uh, toward the enemy, but rather he said he had his eyes on the beauty of the Lord. I remember no matter what's going on, his eyes are on the one God because David, he has confidence that when the trouble comes first lady, that God is going to protect him and sustain him. And if God protected David, he will certainly protect us rather than panic, rather than running and crying and, and weaning and wailing. The Bible says David responds with songs and shouts of joy. David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. 
Are you with me on today? When Peter was in jail, when they put Peter in jail for preaching the gospel, and the Bible says he was chained between two guards, one on each side. But rather than have a pity party bound up in fear and intimidation, Peter began to rejoice in the Lord. Peter began to sing songs of deliverance. And then the Bible says an angel came and delivered Peter right out of the jail. You got to stand on what God is saying. We are living in a world that has real wickedness. We're living in that world where God says we are dealing with the prince of darkness, the prince of the ruler of the air, against spiritual wickedness in high places, against cultures and organizations and agendas that will eat you up. But if you don't have God in you, like the seven sons of Sceva, you can't go out there all high and half cocked. You don't have a prayer life. You don't have a commitment life. You just want to take the big stuff you see in the Bible. And you want to go out there because the Bible says that the apostles was casting out demons. You want to just run out there because the Bible says Jesus was raising them from the dead. That lepers was cleansed. Peter was walking on water. Joshua causing the sun to stand still. Why Israel fought the battle. We don't want to see the things that allowed that was the power of God working in their lives because they followed God's lead. And the Lord was with them. Though I walked in the valley of the shadow of death, God is with us. The church that let we let the world take the fight out of us. We got to shift y'all from fear to faith. Otherwise, the Bible says, Jesus himself says, if the salt loses its saltiness, it's no good to him. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. But if we have no salt, if we have not the fight that God gives us, if you don't have a relationship that allows you to look toward heaven as Stephen did right before they hung him, right before they killed Stephen, Bible says uh, they gave that the Sanhedrin, uh, they gave Stephen uh, an opportunity to, to repent uh, and save his life. Uh, and Stephen said, uh, he looked and behold, uh, he saw the Lord uh, standing on the throne room, uh, standing on the right hand of God. Uh, Stephen knew where the victory was. Uh, Stephen knew just as they were there getting ready to stone him. He knew he had the victory. There was a greater reward waiting for him. We've got to remember that the reward that we live for is beyond this place. We just want a nice house. We want good health. We want a good job. We want great children that never have no problems. But that's just not how the real world works. And you need to know what Jesus said in John 10 and 10. He said, I come that you might have life. He's talking about eternal life. As believers, we live to live again. We got to leave this world one day. You better get your house in order. We want to leave this world one day. You better store up treasures in heaven. We're going to leave this world one day. And when that day comes, I want to hear the Lord say, you want to hear the Lord say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come on and enter. Enter into my rest. But David said, you've got to deal while we're on the earth with the realities of life. He said, when 
The Lord is my strength and my life. He said, whom shall I be afraid? He said, when the wicked and my enemies and them that were against me and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. He said, they stumbled and fell. You're so afraid of what you see that you can't see what's on the inside. You done forgot when you stand there in abject fear. You forget you've got the spirit of the living God on the inside. When God tells you to go left and you see a little trouble over there, you forget the spirit that moved across the face of the deep and caused darkness to be light. You forget that that same spirit is working on the inside. When you confront it with evil and wicked people and they challenge your salvation, they challenge what you think and you get to telling people what you think. Man, nobody cares about what you think. Nobody cares about what I think. The Bible says always be prepared to give an answer to them. Oh, Lord, you better tell them what Jesus says. You better tell them what the word, what the word of God says. That's the only thing that's going to change their lives. You wonder why addicts aren't being delivered. You wonder why alcoholics aren't being delivered. You wonder why mental illness is a muck. Because they took God out of the schools. Because they were afraid. They took God out of our classrooms because they were afraid. They shut down the anti-abortion groups because they were afraid. They stopped walking the streets proclaiming the goodness in the marketplace where all the evil and the wicked hang out. We don't even go in those places and minister no more because they've taken the fight out of us. But Father David said, when the wicked came on me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. And you need to know that you've not had the greater fight. There are people that have been fought against in the church. There are forces that serve God, people that serve God, that have had everything taken from them in the name of the gospel. David said, but though a host should encamp against me, he said, my heart shall not fear. He said, the war should arise against me. He said, in this will I be confident. He said, the one thing that I have desired and that shall I seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. Jesus said the kingdom of God is now. He said the kingdom of heaven is here. We are children of the kingdom. And when we are operating in the kingdom. We are operating in the strength of God. And then no weapon formed against you. Shall prosper. You got to get out of that place. You're afraid of losing your job. You've got to get out of that place. You're afraid of losing your position. You've got to get out of that place. You're afraid of losing members. You're afraid of losing money. You're afraid of everything except the Most High God. But David says, in times of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Now, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. Now, he shall set us upon a rock uh, that we should not be moved. Uh, and sometimes, God, may you may think you've been defeated. Uh, sometimes you may think you've won. Uh, the enemy thought they had defeated Jesus uh, when they put him on the cross. Uh, but you see, Jesus had won uh, that battle. Uh, the enemy thought... Uh, when they put him in the ground, that it was over. But he rose on the third day. The enemy fought. When he didn't come back the first couple of 
the days. And the apostles were running here and there and hiding. Then Jesus showed and appeared. And he let them know that even though it might look like you lost, but we're on the winning side. He said, but David said, but now, when they think they got me beat, they think I'm done now, in first lady. They think I got no more fight in me. David said, now, I call a little shot. Shall my head be lifted above my enemies? Right when they think they got you. Right when they think they done beat you down. They know for sure you're going to close because they done read all your members off. The members aren't showing up like they ought to. They're not supporting like they ought to. Nobody wants to hear from what you've got to say. But David said, he said, that time that my head should be lifted above my enemies. Right when they think they've got me beat, David said, I'm going to offer unto him sacrifices of praise and sacrifices of joy. Because I said, oh God, as the songwriter said, pass me not works into Savior. Do not pass me by. And while on others thou art calling, he said, do not pass me by. Pass me not, he said. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. David said, when thou said, seek my face, my heart said unto me, I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to seek the Lord. I don't care what it feels like. I'm going to keep on trusting him. I'm going to keep on singing his praises. He said, the Lord is hearing us. Lord, don't hide your face from me. Sometimes you feel like you're in this thing all by yourself. But David says, it's in times like that that you've got to encourage yourself. Because David knew, like we all to knew, like we all to know, that the Lord has been our help. The Lord will not leave us, nor forsake us. Then he goes into an intimate statement. He said, the people that love you the most. He said, when my mother and my father, them that love me the most, even sometimes they're going to forsake you. Sometimes they're not going to be able to meet the need, even if they want to. Sometimes the issues that you're dealing with are above their ability to help you out. But the Lord says in times like that, when them that love me the most forsake me, then the Lord he shall take me up. Oh, bless his name. Continue to teach me, Lord. Continue to encourage me, Lord. Lead me in a straight path, oh God. And cause not my enemies to triumph against me. This is what God does for us. He won't deliver us to our enemies. And I need to tell you one last thing. Before I close my message, you got to have, you got to have some testimony from the Lord. You got to have some experience with the Lord. You're gonna have to go through these fights in order to realize just what God will do. If Elijah had not went in the valley to give Israel the message, and the Syrians came. And surrounded him in the valley. Had Elijah not gone. He would have never seen the glory of the Lord. But when the servant said we're in trouble. The Lord told the son. Elijah asked the Lord. Elijah said the Lord just opened his eyes. So he can see. Lord just open our eyes. Put some fight in us Lord. Put some stand in it, Lord. Keep us on the wall. Give us a burden for the work. 
because we know what we're doing is good and right. And I need you to know that the best thing for faith is answered prayer. David said, I had faith unless I had believed in the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Sometimes you've got to stay in there so that you can see the goodness of the Lord. David said it would have drove me mad. He said I had fainted. It would have been all done. Had I not been able. To believe. That I would see the goodness of the Lord. Not when I'm dead and gone. We'll see it then. But he said. In the land of the living. I had fainted. Unless I had believed to see. The goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. David says to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Shifting. From faith. From fear. To faith. Church, y'all afraid of the wrong stuff. Y'all afraid of the wrong people. You're running and hiding from the wrong authority. You should be looking toward the hill for which cometh our help. Our help coming from the Lord who created the heaven and the earth and all that said it. The good gifts and the perfect gifts, they come in from above and they come in down from the Father of lights. But there is no variableness, no chance of turning because God cannot fail. God cannot lie. And he's already said he's God. He's already said he's omnipotent. He's already said he's omnipresent. He's already said he's omniscient. He knows all. He sees all. He's all powerful. And he's everywhere at the same time. So we honor the Lord on today. Shifting from faith, from fear, to faith. Job said the one thing I feared the most. Is come upon me. When we sit back so stymied. And petrified. And in a state of terror. Because we are concerned. About the forces of evil. Coming against us. Some of us are so afraid. That somebody's going to mess around. And call us one of them Christians. Please call me one of those Christians. I hope I live up to that standard. I hope I live up to that point. And when it's all said and done, the Lord will take me up and say, well done. Good and faithful servant. Father, we thank you today for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. Lord, we're going to hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against you. Father, by your spirit, Holy Ghost, let the words that God has spoken go forth and not come back, Lord. Save and deliver, O oh Lord, in, in these days of unbelief. God calls them to triumph over their sin and, and, and deliver them unto a certain salvation that they might see and believe. And be able to witness the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. And God, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and we certainly thank God for you. Looking forward to seeing you again on Wednesday night for our Wednesday night Bible study right here at City of Refuge Christian Center.
Church of God in Christ. I'm Pastor Mike Reddick, Sr.